excellent. So then without further ado, on the motion that this house at Sobodan would stay in the community with Anna instead of continuing the journey and trying to facilitate the creation of this vaccine. Right, uh, PRIs in the Zoom chat, please. We live in a post-apocalyptic world where death, suffering, and the prospect of that surrounds you and it consumes your being on an everyday basis. This is a safe community where you're going to have your safety guaranteed. It is simply too good an opportunity to pass up. Who claims from opening government? Firstly, why this is in your personal interest. And secondly, if your interests are in vaccination, those kinds of things, why we achieve that a lot better on government as well. Starting with personal interests, I would note that there is a massive danger associated with trying to make it uh, make your way to the revolutionaries. This is for two reasons. The first part is just when it comes to the journey to get there. The info slide tells us that this is an incredibly dangerous journey. It is the most dangerous part of the journey, and it's unlikely part that you have likely experienced in the first place. I think our most understanding of zombies is that they're trying to infect you, they're murderous, they're going to kill you, there's a lot of danger out there. Ott might say that you've survived so far, so you have some prior experience of survival. I think this is just simply different to the kind of journey that you're about to embark upon, because this is the most dangerous part of the kingdom that you'd likely have like avoided, so up to this point so far, in order to try and maintain your own safety and survival in that sorts of cases. It is an unprecedented event. You're with someone that you don't know. You simply don't know what's happening. You're in a post-apocalyptic world where literally everyone else is out to get you. It's going to be incredibly dangerous. But I think the danger extends beyond just the journey itself. We're also not entirely sure what actually happens when you get there. The fact that this is a group of revolutionaries in a post-apocalyptic world in which there is no government should be cause for concern. Because what are they like being revolutionaries against? Like, is it just the safety and security of individuals? Is it a different religious group or people that don't look like themselves? I think if they were just a bunch of people who wanted the best for everyone, then this would probably be like a commune or some other kind of community instead of literally revolutionaries. So once you've delivered Anna there, and like this is a post-apocalyptic world where you don't really have communication or that kind of thing, they could entirely just decide to kill you in the first place because now you are of no use to that revolutionary group. They've got Anna, they've got what they've wanted. I think this together means that there's substantial uh, danger to your personal interests and your like literally your own survival if you go embark on this duty. Comparatively, why is your life going to be a lot better within this community? I think firstly, when it comes to safety and security, this is a community that has demonstrated that it is able to survive over the long term. It's been able to preserve a normal life, even though this would have been really challenging to do in the aftermath of the apocalypse, and it has like a substantial population that enables it to do so. It has shown evidence that it's been able to adapt and survive. Now, I might say like, oh, you as an individual has also shown this. I think the ability of like a big group of people to achieve this kind of thing is just simply a lot stronger. I think it's also a lot better for you because you have your family and you have social connections within this community because you have your brother. You probably have other people that you know. Instead of living alone, you're now able to have social connections with other people. We know that this is one of the biggest things that provides meaning to individuals' lives, so you're also more likely to get that. The reason why your personal interest is important is because simply the risk of death or the fact that death might happen might happen to you is something that is fundamentally like prior to any other outcome in the debate. If you die, you're not able to achieve any benefits, whether this be seeing a vaccine get around, enabling that to happen, or like having bonding time with your family or whatever you find valuable personally. Before I move on, I'll take CO. Uh, this is probably quite a gauged community, which is why they've managed to stay secret so, for so long. Even if you can see your brother, you never see your partner again and you feel this sweet embrace. Isn't that a massive harm to your side? Yeah, so I think it's unclear if you're able to see your partner anyways. Um, the fact that you, you now have all of these social connections is something that people adapt to. The CAs have also told us that this isn't your romantic partner, so like, I'm not sure why you really care about this random person who's a partner in some sense. Moving on then to the second extension about creating a vaccine. And we don't think this is necessarily your interest, but we're going to win it anyway. We're going to explain to you why a vaccine that is being created and distributed is far more likely to occur if you stay within the community. The first observation that I just want to make here is 
I believe that this community has probably discovered a vaccine already and is able to distribute it to its people. Why is this the case? It's just because a zombie apocalypse is like really hard to defend against. Like you can build walls, they can climb the walls, like they can sneak in, they can infect people. This is something that they probably have in order to be uh, in its survival. Even if they don't have it, they have an interest in pursuing this kind of thing. But the other part of this is like, uh, I don't know what I wrote down. But I'm also going to respond, uh, also explain why we're more likely to get a vaccine, even if the gated community doesn't have it in the first place. The first observation to say here is this gated community still has a very strong interest in creating a vaccine because the risk is all around them. They want to become technologically dominant. They want to provide better for its people and so on. That means that given both sides have an interest in creating a vaccine, the difference is the capacity to do so. And I think there's three structural reasons as to why this community that is doing very well that we already know about is more more likely to be able to create a vaccine and it has a greater capacity to do so than the revolutionaries on the counterfactual. The first of these reasons is just when it comes to resources. I would note that all we know in the debate is the information given us to the info slide. The info slide tells us that this is a successful community and has been able to maintain a semblance of a normal life. It is well resourced, it has walls, it like has the resources to pursue innovation, it has the equipment to do so. Developing vaccines is kind of difficult if you don't have specialized advanced equipment, you're not going to be successful in doing so. In contrast, the revolutionaries in themselves, like, don't really have any resources. And we know this because if the revolutionaries had a high degree of resources, they probably would have just offered to take you literally over there and like with Anna and wouldn't have made you embark on this really dangerous journey in itself. The fact that they're willing to risk the one person who might be able to create the vaccine or allow the vaccine to be created on this really dangerous journey tells us that the revolutionaries don't have the resources to pursue a high degree of medical research and so on. The second of these reasons is just, I think this gated community is a lot more able to recruit people and is able to offer greater resources, is able to offer safety and security. And the fourth, third reason is just you have greater security in this community because you're not actively fighting off threats uh, because you've like, established that kind of safety and so on. Um, the significance of this analysis then is that if you care about a vaccine being made, uh, you're uh, like you're more likely to just find a vaccine within the gated community in the first place. I would note that also Anna is probably not all that critical to this, just because even if there's unique genetic conditions, they're usually not one person. It's like a family or social area or a bunch of relatives and so on. So I think the community probably has a vaccine anyway. But even if the community doesn't have a vaccine, you are more likely to create it within that community um, if that's what you prioritize, because there's just so much better resource as a successful community as compared to a bunch of really random revolutionaries. You better preserve your life interests and you have a better shot at a vaccine if you stay in this community. We're very proud to propose. I thank the Prime Minister for a fine speech. We now have the leader of opposition make the case for the opening up. Uh, am I audible? Loud and clear. Okay. Your eyes in the chat, please. Starting in three, two, one. I want to be very clear. This debate is what the actor would do, not what OG thinks the actor should do. And this is very important because of the following reasons. They have given no reason as to why you believe they have the vaccine. That is to say that you've constantly reaffirmed yourself as this actor going through the world that the revolutionaries will have the vaccine, the capacity to have the vaccine. It has often seen a signaling positive position to people that you should come to the revolutionary groups, that the expertise should come here, that we are looking at a vaccine, and that often means people will travel towards that revolutionary group and consolidate those expertise and those individuals that are likely to survive, meaning that it's unclear why this community has a doctor beyond an assertion or a speculative claim where the info site says they probably have the capacity to make that vaccine which is inherently more persuasive therefore i have three arguments in open opposition one survival two you've heard the community failing three guilt Firstly, on survival, three thirds of mechanization. The first is expertise. Firstly, you're specifically the person who is being trusted to navigate through this post apocalyptic world, indicating you have some degree of prior experience, indicating that you have some degree of navigation or skills that mean that you are trustworthy in this position. Two, you have the ego. That is to say that you are narcissistic enough to believe that you can deliver the one savior to humanity, be able to distill 
or distribute that vaccine at large. Thirdly, survival. That is to say, OG tried to preempt and say, ah, but you already have prior experience, but this is different. Yes, but the actor knew that when he took on the role, so to some extent did not rationalize that a bit as being a su sufficient deterrent or significant risk to him. Second degree of mechanization is planning. You probably rooted it, rooted it out in advance. You identified the root, root. You got intel from the revolutionaries who probably have gone through this before or know people who went through it before. Secondly, you probably mapped out the risks, understood what was going to happen or understood what was happening around you. Thirdly, the community that is right before the dangerous area, probably it knows people who came from there, who went through it. So probably tell you what worked for them to be able to survive and therefore you can map it on to your own skills. Third degree of mechanization, the resources. Firstly, you're probably heavily armed against a bunch of mindless zombies who don't exactly have the highest IQ. So you can probably just shoot them in the head. Secondly, you often restock in this village and build up the resources, the necessary things to be able to survive. Guns, ammunition, healthcare, bandages, etc. Thirdly, you are already specifically are able then to recharge in that community, be okay, and then move on. Therefore, firstly, you perceive that there is no risk to you as an individual. Even if there may be risk, you do not perceive that risk as sufficient to your life and are willing to go on and are willing to believe that you will survive and fulfill this mission. Therefore, even if OG and CG can prove there's some risk, you don't believe this risk to be sufficient or to be a deterrent. Second argument, you further the community failing. This is four degrees of mechanization. The first is past experiences. That is that you have grown up in this world or lived in this world of post-apocalyptic area where you see the zombie ap apocalypse over on individ individual villages that you thought were safe, people who thought they were smart enough, and you are often believed that there is no reason to trust that this village will con continue to exist. OG say has existed for a long time. Panel, why? Back claim. I don't fucking know. I would pause that this village is probably relatively new or probably somewhat new, but even if it is the case, you're most Emotions are often on edge and you do not believe that they can last into the long term because you have no proof or no belief that that is true. Second degree of mechanization. You fear outsiders coming in that may be militar militarized, may not be trustworthy or may not be an unknown substance and may want to take Anna or do bad things necessarily to that village. And the reason you believe this is you found it while stumbling along and just walking. And if they're that obvious and that visible, you believe one outsider should come in or two zombies may come at you at any given time. Thirdly, unknown culture. That is, you've literally only your brother there. And yes, he may say it's good. He may say it's bad. But the problem is you are trying to make this decision. And you probably ascertain that the culture is something relatively unknown. You don't know the people sufficiently. You don't know who you can trust. And you don't know those people overall. But fourthly, and this flips the bench, the revolutionary group necessarily knows the path you took because you probably negotiated with them to understand the best way, the best route to get there in case they could look for you or help you. The second is that you believe that they have connections all across the world because you believe that one, they are wealthy because they've promised you that wealth. Two, that you believe that they are likely to be militarized or to be a power, like a, a power to fear and therefore you're quite risk averse to turning your back on them. But the reason this is important, right, is that if it, the revolutionaries are an unknown force like OG say, then surely you don't want to fuck them over because you fear that at any given time they could backstab you or come looking for you because they know the path you took and it's clearly not that well hidden of an uh, like of a village or a town and therefore you be believe that they may come for you which means that you possibly believe that there's an irrational fear for your life but also believe the following you view the community safety as temporary that means that you believe getting anna to the revolutionaries is utmost important Secondly, that your brother in the community, that you can save him with a vaccine by bringing Anna forward and specifically doing a good thing. Before I go on, CG, POI. Yes, if, sure, you will be paranoid, but comparatively, aren't you more likely to be scared when you're out and about on the road and a zombie can eat your fucking head? No, because you literally have probably seen zombies being eaten, people being eaten by zombies. You probably irrationally are confident and narcissistic and believe you are the one to do so. This deals with none of the mechanisms. Third argument, guilt. Why do you feel massive amounts of guilt? The first is you've witnessed a lot of violence. That is to say that you probably saw your family get their brains eaten out and probably had an incredibly deep emotive reaction to that. Secondly, you probably also saw your friends, your community collapse around you and often feel bad that you were not able to save them and feel a degree of hopelessness. You probably have traumatic 
responses to this because it's ingrained in your brain. This is to say you've seen the collapse of that society overall and believe that you wish you could save them. Second, saving the world. That is that you made a promise to your partner that you would continue to go on and do this, even if OG are correct. And there may be some palatable reasons why you believe that this community could do the vaccine. You believe and have spoken to a partner that you probably developed a relationship with, even if they are not romantic, in life and death situations. You often bonded over the most extreme and most painful parts of your life and trusted them with the utmost. You want to believe that you should go to the revolutionaries because you are the one that you, the, the group that you spoke about the most, the one that you believe the most, the one that you have the most information about, the people that you believe can widespread and give the vaccine to the most amount of people at any given point. What this means is that even if it is equally compelling, that OG and OO prove that both groups can have access to the vaccine. I would posit you trust and believe the revolutionaries more in their capacity and expertise to prove get the vaccine, but also their ability to distribute it. And thirdly, also their belief to help people. Because the problem with OG is, if this is a gated community, a community that has walls up, they probably don't want that many people in. They probably don't care about people around them. They probably don't have accepted the apocalypse is inevitable and you cannot fight against it. Otherwise, they would go and help people. They would open up their gates. And therefore, those individuals are often worse off. This is to say that you consider this deep guilt with this decision and do not believe that you should make it and you should continue on the road, even if that may end up in your demise. All of those reasons opening opposition. As I'm going to go to opposition for that fine speech, may we have the Deputy Prime Minister extend the opening up case. Hello, just checking I'm audible. Yep. Okay, good eye. For this plan of going to a bunch of crackpot revolutionaries and hoping they'll develop a vaccine that will save the world, there are an extraordinary number of failure points. You might die on the way, you might go there and then get killed. They might, for instance, fail to develop a vaccine. They might kill themselves before they develop a vaccine or after they develop it and then before they distribute it, or they could use it for ill. The thing is, the only thing that I think justified this actor setting out in the or Slobodan from setting out in the first place and going there was hope. A fail, that there being a non-existence of alternatives, there being nothing else he could do except bring this girl through the wasteland to them. But now there is a viable alternative, a, an alternative which didn't exist when the promise was made, an alternative which offers a far better life and the possibility of a life without a bullet in the back of your skull. That's why going and seeking safety, seeking safety among sane people who aren't revolutionaries is probably by far the best decision you could possibly make. I'll start by talking about the danger he has on the path. Because opening up is like, oh, this guy's probably goaded and talented. He's already survived some zombies. One, uh, like it's getting more dangerous, so you're probably in more danger. The thing is, you probably, you might have had like a bunch of real close scrapes and only made it through out of luck. Um, you're going to have less luck on the next thing. The second thing is they're like, oh, he's so talented. Like they, they chose him because he's so talented. No, it's probably just a coincidence that he had this girl. Whatever. The other thing is they say, well, this village can tell you how to get through the wasteland. Probably not, uh, because they probably don't want you to leave, right? Because you've got an asset that's very valuable, namely Anna. They probably want you to die if you're going to depart and hand over an asset to like a revolutionary organization. The final thing they say is like, but maybe you're deluded. Maybe you overestimate your own abilities. Like the, that, that's just not how active debates work, right? We're not trying to predict the behavior of this guy. We're trying to convince this guy what's in his own interest. And if he's deluded, we should say, please don't be deluded. So next part of this speech. Can we trust revolutionaries? Safe answer, no. One, they often have bad interests. They are unstable, violent, and selfish. What are they revolting against? Why is it that they haven't turned into a commune and why is it they still identify themselves with violence against outside forces? Probably not because they're really ethical people. Second of all, they're probably short on resources. Andrew said to no response, this is an organization that can't even do it like a pickup operation to get a girl like what what's what are they going to do the third thing is they're likely highly ideological again because they're revolutionaries fourth of all they're likely revolution they're, they're ruthless because they're revolutionaries you can't overthrow a government without killing people and fifth of all there's likely a lot of infighting because people within the organization cynically want to rise to the top but also because there are honest ideological disagreements so if you don't die on the way there are three things that are likely to happen one, you get shot in the head. And that's because when you're there, like sure, they promise to give you money, but they probably don't want to give you the money. And once you're there, you've given them 
Anna, the thing of value, and so they have no use for you. But also, it might just be you have an ideological disagreement with them, and so then they just shoot you. But second of all, it's likely that they don't make a vaccine, because revolutionaries tend not to be the best and brightest people, and so they're not going to be put it together. But again, because of infighting, because of their ruthlessness, it's likely a very unstable society that will fall apart very quickly before it's able to develop and distribute a vaccine. But third of all, even if they develop it, they're unlikely to use it to good. So even if you somehow survive the journey, by more luck than you have any entitlement to, you are unlikely to actually get the goal of a vaccine or anything resembling a sane life and a safe life. The next thing I'll say is why we're far more likely to get a vaccine on our side. One, you're far better able to develop it in this community because it has resources and because it is stable. Sure, it might not be perfectly stable. It might have some vulnerability to the outside, but it is more stable. I guess the inside side says it's stable. Second of all, they're likely to spread the vaccine widely. And sure, they might currently be a closed shop because they don't want to advertise their presence to potential raiders and zombies. But once they have a vaccine, they're likely willing to spread it to others for altruistic reasons. But second of all, distribution increases safety because it will decrease the number of zombies around them. So even if they're somewhat self-interested, they're still likely to be able to Want, want to do this, but third of all, you're likely able to persuade them. That is, if you rocked up with like the greatest gift that could come to people in the middle of a zombie apocalypse, you're likely to gain some amount of sway, some amount of influence. The third thing I'll say under this point is that there's like a pretty reasonable chance that this community has the vaccine already. And, and, and that's just because, uh, you know, it's unlikely that there's one person out of all of humanity that has a mutation. There's probably a bunch of people that have any given mutation. And given that they're safe and sound, and given that this mutation probably isn't unique, they might as well have it, at which point there's literally no need to go on to the, uh, you know, the uh, evil terrorist compound or whatever it's called. So moving on, closing off. Uh, if they have a vaccine, why haven't they distributed, to, distributed it to the rest of humanity? Um, okay, so one thing is it might just be like they need someone to persuade them. It could also be like you just go turn up, steal a bunch of equipment and stuff and then distribute it if that's really your interest. But also it might well be that they're distributing it and you just haven't heard about it yet. Just because I, I think like most news organizations probably aren't running in tip top condition in the middle of the zombie apocalypse. Uh, the final point in this speech will be about how you're far more likely to have a great time. Because they said um, on, on opening off, they were like, oh, this group probably doesn't want people there. One, your brother's there. He can probably speak up for you. Second of all, you have Anna, which means that, like, you know, pretty high value asset. But third of all, if you've made it, if you've survived so far, you've you know, you can come across as a result of your experience as someone who is capable, reliable, and ethic ethical. He'll be a very productive member of that community, and they probably need people like you who can survive there. So what is likely to happen is you can live behind these walls, probably like sitting in the sun, growing vegetables, like sinking beers, hanging out with your brother, which honestly sounds like a really, really good lifestyle. There are some responses that Offbench can have. The first is, no, what about saving the world? The issue is that those are other people who are not Slobodan, and the actor is Slobodan. So consider this, there might well be another planet out there, and suppose there are a bunch of people who are suffering there. That doesn't affect me. I'm still having a great time. And the same applies to Slobodan. He can hang out. The second thing they can say is like, oh, no, you'll feel real guilty because you haven't done anything. But we have all of these justifications. See the 14 minutes that myself and Andrew have given you. Uh, or, or in response to this stuff about breaking a promise. Really, the promise was made under very constrained amounts of information. Because you probably believe the terrorist organization of the, <laughs> the revolution is your only hope. Um, but the thing is, now you've uncovered a great amount of information and the reasonable person will be able to think, well, my partner probably wouldn't want me to risk death and then getting killed at the end of the journey and whatnot. They probably would be pretty happy with me sticking around here. So you, you, you're probably not feeling incredibly guilty. The third thing opening off says is like, oh, what if it collapses? The thing is, the society seems safe enough, but also there's the high risk of the revolutionary community collapsing. They've got to be symmetric. The final thing that they say is like, well, maybe collapse will be caused by revolutionaries invading. Um, but the thing is, like, they have to cross that really dangerous route, which they don't seem capable of doing. But also, they probably just think you died on the journey because they haven't heard about you arriving in this town. Ultimately, on our side, you live a great life. You have to save more people. Proud to propose. I thank the Deputy Prime Minister for that fine speech. And now to close off the talk after debate, maybe have the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. Hello, as if you are in chat. Uh, sorry, Emery, we couldn't quite catch you. Oh, really? Um, oh, this is better. Yep, you're fine. Okay, is it okay if I sit back here? Is that still audible? No, 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 it's fine. 
Okay, cool. It's probably just lagging then. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I'll take POIs in the chat if that's okay. Um, I'm just going to do some responses to the OO case and then rebuilding. That's not really helpful structure, but it'll be tagged as we go through. The first thing that OO has is that this mission is dangerous and there are potential failure points. This is non-responsive to what Jack already told you, which is that you are someone who has survived this long, has skills enough that the revolutionaries wanted to hire you and had the ability to plan out and know what your journey would entail. Meaning that even if you know there is danger, that's not enough to dissuade you from what the actual mission is. The revolutionaries also are people that you likely believe in as opposed to what they're saying. At least they have a small margin of success when the alternative is leaving the world condemned to the apocalypse. Um, the reasons that you likely believe the revolutionaries have this capacity is one, that you made this promise to your partner. Um, you also too had to talk to the revolutionaries when they were contracting you to deliver Anna to them. So you probably were able to ask questions to believe that taking on the amount of danger that OG talks about seemed reasonable to you, meaning that you believe that it's possible at that point. Um, it's also about the doubt you have versus the guilt there. So the response that Mark gives is to say that you can justify it to yourself, um, but those justifications don't add up to the actual qualitative feeling that you've had watching people that you cared about die, seeing society collapse. Even if there is a small shred of belief that you could have that says maybe the revolutionaries are legit, that gives you the rationality to say, I should at least try, especially when you could question them and talk about it with your partner. You could perceive it as the only chance because you also, this is also responding to Mark, have no reason to believe there are people with the same mutation that Anna has, or even if there could be that they will be found, um, she has been found, or if they could happen, they would happen much, much later, meaning the vaccine would be developed later and more people would be harmed. Probably something everyone doesn't want to happen. In terms of the community, somehow having access to the vaccine, no, if the community had the vaccine, you would have asked them and we wouldn't be debating the motion. So I don't think we really need to respond to this. Um, but also in terms of them having the capacity to develop it, just because they have walls to survive and a food source does not mean that they have access to things like microscopes, things like vaccine synthesizers, or people with the scientific knowledge to produce the vaccine, nor considering the fact that this community is isolated, do they have the networks to find those things um, or the willingness to put their lives on the line to do it. Even outside of that, this actor would need to have enough faith and trust in the community to be willing to communicate about Anna to them to get to that point. I don't know why they would do that when they just got here and people have probably been bad in the apocalypse, which I'll talk about later. The revolutionaries, at least you know, had the capacity to network to find Anna and to find you, meaning it is reasonable to assume they had the network to find someone with access to a lab and find someone with the amount of knowledge and resources or just knowledge, just like a scientist, to be able to investigate the vaccine and figure it out. Um, the community, if you told them about Anna, also probably may not want you to leave. They could threaten you about that. Um, so I think you're probably still likely to go off on your journey. Um, revolutionaries, I don't know why they're ruthless. Mark uh, asserts this. Um, but just having low resources doesn't mean they're bad. Again, they still have the network. They at least wanted to scope these things out. So you do have some capacity to believe this is important. Okay, moving into rebuilding, the actor does very much believe in this mission, not just because they promised their partner, but because they have committed the level of danger that O is talking about. So you at least ought to try to get Anna there, especially when you have had what Jack has already proved, no response. The ability to build up more resources while you're in the community, get more knowledge from them if you need to continue on your journey. Um, in addition to your previous belief that you could succeed in this mission, uh, otherwise you wouldn't have taken it on because your life is probably important to you. So yes, you've seen some scary things now. Stopping here is probably not what you want to do, especially because Mark gives no responses to what Jack tells you about how this society is not guaranteed to be safe forever. You are someone who has lived in the apocalypse for a long time, which means you know that the ultimate golden rule of apocalyptic scenarios, there are scarce resources and many people, or at least some people trying to survive, compete 
for those resources. What this means is three things for the society. One, people internally in it fear this because they have witnessed the external world too, or have the fear that they may not have enough food or may not have enough power to be able to survive, which means it's possible that they crumble to infighting or have their own structural issues internally. Two, external groups who are also trying to survive and may have armed weapons could find the community try to oust the people and end in a conflict that gets everyone exposed to the zombies. You as someone who has been surviving in the zombie world would have seen other people are also surviving, probably doing ruthless, actual ruthless tendencies to be able to survive that much, which means you don't have a guarantee of safety here at all. Thirdly, it could just be the smallest thing of people making a mistake, like leaving the door in the fence open. There's no reason that the society is going to stay safe you know that, especially as someone who's been contracted in these groups, has seen different people fall and different people die, meaning that there's no long-term survivability for you here. Before I go on, I'll take the POI from CG. If you cared so much about the well-being of the world and the vaccine, why did you do it for money? Why didn't you just do it out of the goodness of your heart and altruistically? Well, money is probably a fun benefit. Um, <laughs> regardless if someone came up to you and said, you can take the child and also we'll pay you. I don't know why you wouldn't just also take the money. Um, the promise does show that even if the money sweetened the deal, you did still believe that it was possible. In addition to all the analysis about people dying not being the most enjoyable thing to witness. Um, and there still being people that you care about in the world. Insofar as your brother and your partner exist, um, you have those emotional ties that you can extend to other people. Uh, yeah. So the comparison then becomes, maybe you will die on the road, maybe the society will collapse. Both have uncertainty for your ability to live, but what Anna gives you with the revolutionaries who do have the networks to get scientists is the capacity for long-term solvency for the apocalypse. Something that you don't only, that is one, good for you, insofar as you'd likely have first access to that vaccine and also could potentially influence the revolutionaries to give it to those that are close to you. Um, if it is there, but two, that's on comparison to you not having any potential hope or any potential future for yourself, Anna, or the people that you care about. Given the slim chance, when both do still have death on either side that you can rationalize, you would likely go for the thing that at least gives you some fighting chance of survival, not just for you, but for those you care about and for your own values. Um, so I think the actor would do that and hopefully it works, but I haven't seen the show or played the game. Oh, well. I thank the speaker for that fine speech. That ends the top half debate. Now to kick off the back half debate, maybe have the number. Okay. <laughs> I just forgot the names for those people. Uh, Morbo, right? Yep. Starting in three, two, one. A very simple extension. Anna is your girl, whether romantically or like a father figure. You must protect her at all costs. This is the most proximate moral and emotional obligation that you have in comparison to everything else. We're just going to outweigh everything and if you have time, run up an extension on security as well. Three reasons as to why you care about this chick. The first reason is that if we concede that the apocaly apocalyptic world is full of dangers and you are able to survive for an extended period of time, this means there is a considerable amount of emotional and intellectual compatibility between you for you to be able to avoid conflicts, to work together and to be able to survive. Secondly, considering that this is a solo mission, you and, you and the girl, this likely means that you have spent an insane amount of time talking with each other, interacting with one another. This looks like, for example, late night talks, sharing stories while we are on the road, interacting, developing casual jokes with one another, and generally speaking, slowly but gradually developing a massive bond with that particular person and likely developing certain like fatherly instincts over her and wishing to protect her so on and so forth. This is the person with whom you have interacted mostly or entirely for the past few weeks or months, which means this is the most socially proximate person to you in terms of depth of connection, but feeling as any connection to them whatsoever. I would say that thirdly, People justify their interactions with other people with a lot of like various reasons, specifically for her, considering that you have taken a special moral obligation to protect her in order to survive the mission altogether. And considering that you feel her as a special person because like she she like is immune to 
the zombie virus. This necessarily means that you put a higher emphasis on protecting her own well-being, but also caring more for her because you have to justify why you have went through so much struggle, why you have directly risked your life in the most and in the most likely interpretation is that you massively care for that person and you must do everything for her. Now, why are the revolutionaries likely to be problematic for her? Two broad reasons. The first of which is that they are in the they are likely to be harmful towards that particular person. Why? It's not clear whether whether they have are professionals, they have the equipment, but it's not clear whether they have the professionals. B, it is like per the info slide, they are like revolutionaries, which means they're willing to make radical measures. The most intuitive radical interpretation within the post-apocalyptic world is that the ends justify the means, that you say you are willing to sacrifice the health of a person in order to, to save the whole of humanity, which necessarily means that you are likely to risk the life of that person or through extensive health interventions that are likely to become more and more intrusive if the vaccine isn't initially successful, this is likely to risk her life. But I would say that secondly, let's say that none of this matters. It's all in your head because if you are a person who like any social creature cares about, cares about social connections and you have been systematically starved of emotional compatibility with other human beings because of us, any other team can see you've been on your own for so long. This necessarily means that you specifically care about her because it triggers your own risk averseness if that person is in danger or your own paranoia gets in your head. And it is likely to get in your head because the most intuitive mindset of people within a, 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 like the zombie apocalypse is that you shouldn't trust anybody else. So giving her into the hands of other people is likely to induce a massive amount of anxiety or paranoia. But thirdly, I would say that they have to inevitably separate you, even if they have the best intentions. This is so for two reasons. The first of which, you're either useless to them or you're counterproductive because you are likely to actively sabotage or at least risk sabotaging their capacity to develop a vaccine if they go too far or they make measures that make you feel uncomfortable, which means they have to actively get rid of you or shut you down and to separate you from her, considering that it was in, this will inevitably create a conflict because you care too much about her to let them hurt her or to be uh, irrationally believe that you are willing to hurt them. But I would say that secondly, they inevitably, if they have to make the vaccine, they have to go through different locations with different equipment, or they have to actively redistribute the vaccine and to actively have her for testing for more vaccines and to, uh, to actively get more samples, which necessarily means that they have to necessarily separate you from her. This is the most important impact in the round, considering that people are social creatures and it's the way to which we find meaning in the world. We get validation, we communicate so that we don't get, develop a psychosis. It is likely to be the person with whom you have developed a special connection in spite of anybody else. How does this clash with opening opposition? They say moral obligation towards humanity, blah, blah, moral obligation. Three responses. The first of which, moral systems don't exist anymore. And the most common narrative that exists within the post-apocalyptic world is that moral systems have collapsed. This is a completely different world and each person is on their own. Secondly, you have much more proximate needs to ensure your own survival and the survival of your friends and relatives than to care about what humanity and the abstract concept of humanity thinks as a whole. If you're busy dying from zombies or fighting for your life, you don't care about that. But thirdly, even if you have moral obligation towards humanity as a whole. You personally feel a more proximate, uh, like more obligation to protect that person in particular. Meaning it's very easy to justify psychologically why that person is the most important. Before I continue, open it, yes. So given our analysis of the danger that is also posed to the isolated community, Anna is equally in danger there. The vaccine yes. that the revolutionaries develop is the only thing that gives you certainty of her future safe. Perfect. Why the community is going to be safe? Two mechanisms. The first of which, the creation of the community. If this community has managed to survive in spite of all the obstacles, this necessarily means that they are doing something right. Secondly, borrowing opening opposition's analysis. They're very selective and picky when they're picking people, which means there is an extensive introduction process or they're using scout, scouting missions to see whether the person that they're actively introducing is one that meets their qualifications. Meaning, in terms of human capital, there's a higher likelihood for you to actively be able to get that. I would say that this is beneficial for three reasons. The first of which, you are likely to operate and get experience with other people that are proficient at surviving. You inevitably have to go into the outside world, which means somebody else has to get eaten by a zombie in a dangerous situation. Some Somebody else has to cover your back. Somebody else has to be with you because over the long term resources around you get more scarce, which means you have to go to more extended and, and longer distance uh, like mission, missions, which necessarily means that it's more exhausting and you need more people. But I would say that secondly, this likely means that protection from those veterans and those is beneficial because the zombie apocalypse gets worse over the long term, guys. This is so for two reasons. And I know this will sound crazy, but I have watched The Walking Dead, so bear with me. 
Zombies are predatory creatures, which means over the long term, they chase the same prey or they collectivize, which is why they go in hordes, which meaning that you on your own are likely to be overwhelmed, which necessitates over the long term for you to get over walls. But secondly, it creates a massive degree of uncertainty. The more the virus exists, the more likely mutations are to happen. This is why, for example, zombie viruses in every single fictional piece get, like, get more crazy as time passes because they mutate to more people and they mutate to more animals. Finally, on the point about conflict, I would posit something very simple. If you are a safe community, you have the capacity over the long term to plant mushrooms, animals, trees, which means we're better able to resolve the food scarcity that the opening opposition cares about, and we're better able to get inner cohesion. But also, food is beneficial because you can better function, which means you have an increased likelihood of survival. On all those grounds, propose. I think we have that fine speech. Maybe now I have a number of opposition. I think it's the third one. Uh, hey, can I be seen and heard? Yes, to both. Okay, awesome. All right, this is going to be a bit of a meta extension, but try to follow along, yeah? In an average debate, you have a set of factors in an info slide, and then based on the laws of reality and physics and all that, you make some deductions based on that and then come to some conclusions of what this world looks like. But what we've kind of established from the most of this debate is that a lot of things in this debate don't make sense. Why are they revolutionaries? Why didn't they send a drop team? How do zombies come about and break the laws of physics? And why is there this random community that's like appeared out of nowhere? And even the basic intuitions that people have come up with are actually entirely assertions based on things like movie law. Like for example, why does CG know the mechanics of zombies and how they operate? There's no facts in a textbook that can tell you that. Obviously it is because they're deducing this from movies and therefore not, not using the perspective of a average reasonable person in a normal world, but rather you should be thinking about this debate and judging this debate, not like cold reality, but kind of like after you watch a movie and discussing what the main character should have done. So. Given the nonsensicalness of this world, we believe that this character, Slobodan, probably likely lives in some kind of plot, like a movie, a book, a figment of a child's imagination. And that has a number of really, really important uh, implications. The first implication is this person probably has plot armor because they're the main character and main characters don't usually just get killed by a relevant zombie because that is not entertaining. But even if the main character doesn't necessarily have that plot armor, the girl definitely does. And this annihilates CG's extension. Children do not die in Hollywood movies or in TV shows. That is just a rule. You have to accept that. The second thing is this character probably has a hero's mindset, which means that they don't have the kind of like really weak resilience that we have and we just take easy options that are safe. Like the hero in a story or the narrator, the, the main character, they don't stop halfway. They have extreme desires to overcome the odds and achieve the ultimate utility of achieving their goal and finishing their journey. The other thing about this community is that this community is unlikely to be the solution or to be very good. Firstly, because it would be like too easy of a solve to the complication and would be highly unentertaining. Uh, secondly, because this community is likely to be some kind of red herring plot device where the community is either evil or is likely to fail. And lastly, at this point, like the way that you direct like movies and stuff is that originally you like put in zombies and then people are like jump scared by the zombies and that creates entertainment. But after a certain while, this guy survived and stuff, people are kind of bored of the zombies, which means that you you need to introduce a new form of adversary, a new kind of antagonist. That antagonist is usually human nature. Like that, that makes your movie or your TV show, or your book a lot more complex. And that's likely to take place in the form of this community. So given those rules, we basically auto win this debate because we're the only ones that actually explain how those rules work. And therefore we basically provide the setup that opening scenes <laughs> do not provide. However, in addition to the meta framing of why, you know, this community is likely to be bad, why you're likely to have these rules and therefore your imperative is likely to finish this journey, there's a set of really good additional reasons that are also based in some degree of logic as to why, you know, you should not take this decision. And that is because uh, opening teams kind of take for granted, like, there's this post clock apocalyptic world full of zombies fraught with danger and like nobody finds it highly highly suspicious that in like the middle of nowhere there is just this 
thriving community relatively unaffected by zombies and like they're highly secret like your own brother didn't even reach out to you or try to find you or contact you or phone you because apparently the revolutionaries can contact you remotely uh and what this means is that this community has structurally found some way of avoiding the zombies or artificially constrain the presence to avoid detection and we know that this method is unlikely to be something that is ethical or easily replicable because if it was then this community would have already either tackled the zombie problem or they would have spread this solution around the community and that's why it can't be like what og says when they try to scroll the debate like they already have a vaccine or something like that so uh given and and the other thing is like it's unlikely to be that this community has a combination of luck or they put out a bunch of walls uh, because then secrecy would be unnecessary. But even if it was that, uh, that would be a very fragile foundation for this community to exist. And it would mean that this you know, community is likely to be run over by zombies in the new future. The empirical evidence of this is in the movie World War Z, there's a, the Israel community kind of like build up massive walls and the zombies still kind of know that anyway. So given that, what is this community likely to look like? Firstly, this community is likely to possess some kind kind of method to appease zombies and usually in movies and books this looks like some form of human sacrifice to satiate the hunger of zombies or to draw those zombies away and the people that they usually use as sacrifices is usually the pool of newcomers that come into these kind of communities because they're the ones that don't know what's up they're the ones that like don't suspect that this community is great and that's why like these communities like appear great initially to kind of lure people in and all that kind of stuff and that way they can serve the interests of that community Secondly, these communities often have policies of constraint, which is either they're extremely paranoid of outside people and they think that you might be a zombie and therefore they shoot you upon you trying to enter the community, or they don't accept newcomers, or they have population reduction policies, or they don't want you letting the outside know and attracting attention and to avoid the possibility of you escaping or radioing the outside world, they're going to lock you up and kill you, or you can just never leave and that completely ruins you of your agency, you're never going to see a partner again, you never have the agency to do things like approach that revolutionary group again. Thirdly, it might be like this community is run by some religious fanatic, which means that they're highly able to coordinate members of the community, which usually means that this community has really shitty practices that we don't want to subscribe to. Or fourthly, this community knew in advance that the apocalypse could have happened, and thus they had measures to prepare for it, which means that the kind of members of this community who knew what happened probably would be adverse to you possessing some kind of solution to that, given they either implemented or were culpable in the zombie apocalypse in the first place. Uh, before I undertake a comparison, I want to take a POI from closing yes okay. the yep. very fact that you have agency to make a decision means this is the real world and not fiction with somebody else pulling the strings bro like just like your mechanism as to why this is the real world is like you have some time to make a decision our mechanism as to why this isn't the real world is like literally everything in the info slide the fact that zombies exist the fact that there's these revolutionaries the fact that this community exists the fact that opening can't agree on the mechanics of how zombie works and the mechanics of how this world works so let's uh, take a comparison of the two scenarios the vast majority of what lies ahead in your journey is quite familiar because you know you you already survived in this world you know the revolutionaries because presumably they've given you contact and you likely know how to get to your destination because you've operated in this world before. And in terms of weighing, the reason why you should weigh this concrete familiar option over a speculative one about a community that is highly suspicious is because your original decision is something you already consented to, which means you've internalized there's already at least like a 51% of chance, or probably a lot more than that, uh, which means that on the balance you should mathematically weigh something that is more than more than likely or not to be successful because that is something you already consented to and something that you already internalized versus something that is entirely speculative and this world this fictional world we can't make assumptions we can't have rules is definitely highly speculative for these reasons very, very proud to uh, oppose i thank the speaker for that fine speech and that propose the uh case for cg you maybe have you got hi i presume you can hear me Yep. Amazing. PYs in chat. I would love to take one from opening at five and I'll start in just a sec. Okay, starting in three, 
two, one. The reality is that we don't know anything in this motion. It's all so super fucking speculative. That's the reason why in Top Hat, maybe it will be risky. Maybe the revolutionists will be crazy communists that will kill you off. Sorry, Bisre. Or maybe you'll just be more, more unsafe within this. I think there's just too much speculation for us to be able to win this. That's why we win on more certain things about the human nature of you being a social person and actually connecting with someone and that you don't want to see them fucking get extracted their DNA or be tortured, you know, to save humanity. Now, let's get into responses. First thing, quickly on CEO. I thought we would be the range, but they beat me to it. I think what their case is very, very like interesting, I would say. First thing, though, uh, this motion presumes that this is in the real world in order for you to be able to make a decision for the actor, so which one would you choose? But second, even if it is, if it's a fiction, I think there's different preferences for fiction, okay? Your survival is not always guaranteed because sometimes you would want the main character to die for the dramatic effect as it happened in the fucking video game. I think this is highly uncomparative. But secondly, thirdly, and even if that's the case, I'm unsure, and this is throughout the debate something, I'm not sure why survival is always the most important thing to you, considering that you risked your life for some random chick in the beginning to get her somewhere, you know, for you to get some money. Maybe you don't value your life that much, but I will get into this later on. Let's get into extraneous rebuttal on OO. Firstly, four mechanisms why you don't care about the world and its betterment. One, know that what, to this point, you have lived in this world, meaning that you couldn't have done a lot in order to save people before. That is so say you saw your family die you saw that the people care about are getting away and you maybe try to save them in some way but nothing worked because you lose them anyway i'm unsure then why you would care more for other people considering that the most close people to you your family your friends supposedly are already dead most people tend to care only about themselves and their more approximate circle i'm unsure why you cared about the random person at the end of the world secondly as we already pointed out moral systems have already collapsed why is this the case one everybody is fighting for themselves this is not it's it's hard for people to collectivize because it's they are not grouped together they are distributed all around the world this is every zombie apocalyptic kind of uh, movie but secondly even if that's the case it's easy for you to justify this right oh safety but never really uh, oh gee sorry don't have mechanize it the reality is no one else is fighting for someone else it, there's no one you can compare yourself to see ah see they're being altruistic they're fighting for someone else i should do this as well and not be selfish no one is fucking doing this because otherwise they might have been some solvency. Comparatively, it's the fact that you are, are likely going to justify this in the long run, even if you feel guilty a bit in the short term. Thirdly, though, note, I think more at this point, you're either very nihilistic because you see that you don't believe you can be the hero. It's not the childhood story you thought that you were able to save the world because it's that hard and you're able to rationalize this at the point that no one else has been able to do it. That's fine. Why are you you're likely going to be? You're not like God's chosen soldier or whatever the fuck. But lastly, even if that's the case, I think comparatively you care more about Anna random, rather than the random people that you're better able to save from the vaccine. Why is this the case though? One, you think that you your sacrifice at the end of even if the vaccine is get uh, created you think that the sacrifice wouldn't be worth it because the person you cared recently more deeply about has been hurt has been taken away the most the best case possible meaning you cannot talk to her anymore you cannot have good time with her because you take a long time for them to develop this vaccine meaning she's stuck there and you feel like you abandoned her you have a more proximate responsibility towards her rather than the, the other person who lives in the texas or wherever you are comparatively the last thing, though i think you just will have a lot of of regret you think why should other people be happier when i can't be happier or my family wasn't able to be happy because they couldn't have access to the vaccine this is the villain arc that most people go through second thing they say ah survival is more likely and i want to be clear we are more charitable to all than og because we presume sure maybe you'll be able to survive the mission we don't really care maybe you're chosen maybe you'll be able to get through this why still this not comparative Firstly, they never compare, even if the society in like the, that you're going to stay is maybe going to be dangerous, why comparatively the other society will be better. They have no reasoning as to why when you go back to your old community, it's likely to be safer. And even if that's the case, I would just say, I don't think you care about your survival at this point. Why? One, you saw so many people die. You saw so many deaths and violence, but at this point, you dying is something that's not going to really surprise you. But secondly, I think to that case that you've been willing to risk yourself and go through a very dangerous journey. journey means that you are not trying to preserve your life and do whatever is possible to preserve your life, aka hide in a certain bomb hole and just turn, pray that you'll be safe. Rather, you expose yourself to the risk, very likely risk, that you would have been harmed physically, mentally, and maybe even died. There is no reason why 
why either teams of opening cup has proven that survival is more important. But even if they have, we've given you reasons why survival and safe security is more important, uh, more likely on our side, to the point at which this society is comparatively better than any other society that has no hierarchy and no sense of order whatsoever. Last thing that all will bring is you think they will find you, right? That they are paranoid and that they will be able to get you. First, you have a reassurance that the people within that community will save, uh, with, like, will protect you, right? Because they are, all of them are in danger if someone comes. So therefore, you they will try to help you. But secondly, they, they it's impossible for them to know exactly where on the road you stop. If they're willing to pay you a lot of money, it means that the road was very long. You could have been at any point on this fucking road. How are they going to find this specific place? And you are able to rationalize this to yourself. But I would say, even if you're paranoid, I think this is comparatively better, but like the small notion uh, compared to the deep regret that you lost someone you love in a parental way or whatever way you want. This is what happens in the movies. But other way that you are not able to protect her as you promised. Uh, oh. The problem with this is it is highly speculative if Anna survives on your side for all of the preemption we gave. However, the certainty is you had a plan, you planned it out, and you know what is at the end, and that is what the actor prioritizes subjectively. Maybe she doesn't survive, but you, at least you spend time with her. At least you have some control over what happens to her. It's comparatively better, at least in your hand, that maybe you'll be able to protect her when you are with her. You have no control over what happens to her when she is left in a random room with some strangers, and you're uh, uh, like forced to get out. It's comparatively better. But secondly, we already proved why this mission is not the most important thing to you. And even if you change plans, fuck it, it happens all the time it's something that you're like we use now last you know OG and why we beat them first the states they uh, suffer from the same problem where they never analyze where the actors specifically would care for their security only thing they say is that you if you die you will not get to see the vaccine but this depends on you caring about the vaccine it's not like they prove it but it's just not backstabbing it's just they never prove it but secondly our actor uh, impacts are more certain firstly because we prove that it's just more likely that you would just bond with another person who you spend a lot of time with and where you share your stories as opposed to the that you would care more about the vaccine and the system of this. But lastly, and I think this is very important, there we take the best case of all and we give better responses as to why you will not feel guilt and why you necessarily will be able to cope better with this, thus making a, the impact more deeply because you lose someone you love, both of them. Thank the speaker for that fine speech. And now, as I end the speech, maybe half of it. I'm going to start by removing CG from this debate. Their extension is simple. You care the most about protecting Anna. The first thing to note is that clearly you have spent some time with her. She's not an annoying child, so maybe you have an emotional bond. But this is a team which never actually proves why this your care for Anna overrides all of your other interests pertaining to your partner, your own safety, existing family, members, or even humanity. And the set of reasons as to believe why they're likely to care about these things the most. And the first of which is just to say, you were literally handed her like this randomly to get taken to the revolutionaries. You had no pre-existing relationship with her, which therefore means even though you spent time with her, the time you spent with her was probably less than the actual bonds you formed with someone compared to your partner, you probably spent the vast majority of the zombie apocalypse surviving with. The second thing to note here is that insofar as you're willing to sacrifice your own safety to even embark on this mission, you clearly do care about humanity to a very significant extent, and also the mission which you've been given there, which also, once again, deprioritizes Anna into your mind. These are the sets of, I think their only kind of claim here is to say morality no longer matters. They provide you with a certain thing which is based on social relations and a desire for, like, humanity. Obviously, one, it is not mutually exclusive to your relationship with Anna, given that you had a partner. But also, secondly, this clearly also is a moral framework, right? Like, maybe you're not, like, utilitarian or Kantian or whatever, but choosing to prioritize your relationship with someone else is clearly a moral standpoint, which therefore means this is a self-defeating argument in of itself. The third observation to be made is that even if you believe the claims to be true at best, the conditions for success, which is Anna is protected and safe, is actually completely contingent upon OG's mechanisms as to why when you go to this community, you're not likely to get attacked. So in that sense, I think it's once again a less important contribution in this debate. And the last to note is that if you believe our extension that this community is going to be dodgy, once again, it explains why Anna's life is going to be harmed. That is why CG is out of this debate. But before then, OG. This isn't a kidnapping. Anna going consensually shows her primary interest is in getting a vaccine, which you're most able to get at OG with better resources. Also, we don't know if you're the main character. You could just be a random person. 
Dude, no random person gets given a magical child to take to a revolutionary. Of course you're a main character. Come on. And also, to your response to your first thing about kidnapping, never claim she was kidnapped. She just got handed to you. That seems like consistent with our case. The next thing we're going to then do is with our extension and explain why we win this debate. The first extension we tell you here is to say you are probably a main character in the story, and that therefore means your likelihood of success is going to be quite strong, which is to say, you know, zombies are fake. This follows a very clear narrative structure. We get given a mission, you go on a journey, you have some complications, you reach some difficult decision, and now you're likely to come to some sort of conclusion. And there are two implications of this, which is that firstly, at the point where you're a protagonist, you're very likely to survive. That therefore means that in a debate full of speculation, if you believe this premise, we are the only team which gives you a 100% guaranteed chance of survival, and that is the most concrete impact you all prioritize in this debate. What responses do we hear to this? The first response we hear is, is that you obviously live in the real world because it took you a long time to make this decision. I will simply respond that Hamlet took an entire three hour play to come to a decision as to whether to kill Claudius. That probably still makes him fake, does not seem like mutually exclusive to the idea between fiction and reality. The second thing to note here is just that, well, they go, CJ goes, well, it's not actually guaranteed. You could still die. Do it for dramatic effect. I think it's probably true to some extent, but you have to consider the balance and probabilities and the genre by which you are existing in. Or just say, this story is not Game of Thrones, which seeks to underscore the dark nature of humanity and its capacity for self interest, and also why we want shock value and we kill like notable characters to demonstrate that society is kind of messed up. Often these zombie stories do want to have an optimistic ending where you do want to save humanity, but the very reason that these stories are more often produced because seeing a story where someone just you know, a hero goes in and dies and zombies take over the world is really unenjoyable. It often isn't a box seller, it's something which people don't particularly like, which means even if this is true, on net, you've got to believe that this is something which is far more likely to have a happy ending and far more likely to be positive, which is why we believe that you are far more likely to survive. But secondly, Interpreters directly responds to CG, which is say, even if you as a protagonist is likely to die, if you get out on the most, this kid has the most freaking plot armor. Like she's literally like a magical child who is insensitive to zombie vaccination, uh, zombie, a uh, zombification, which probably means we satisfy their burden there. So that's why we've already won this debate if you believe this extension. The second extension that if you uh, if you do not believe this is to explain why this community is likely to be particularly bad. And my intuition pump here is also just like, think about every single story in like the Odyssey with the Lotus Eaters, like, you know, tempt you away from your journey and they turn your brain to marsh. Or when you go to Cersei's Island and men get turned to pigs, you should never trust safe havens. They probably are quite evil. And David explains why, structurally speaking, this community is going to be kind of weird and it's going to be kind of sussy. He has more imagination than me and cites things like human sacrifice, cites things like potentially it's going to be a cult. But in the you believe the most kind of sane sort of explanation that this is going to be a particularly gated community, the loss you have to experience is things like never leaving again. Which is to say, you live in a town where maybe everyone's really freaking annoying and everyone's kind of culture and you hate living here is something which is particularly damaging to you or for very fact that you are no longer able to access any degrees of agency or freedom and as someone who is kind of probably trained in killing zombies and kind of living out in the wild this kind of restriction probably is something which is quite hard, uh, uh, quite debilitating towards you because you kind of enjoy the outdoor lives in that sort of way but let's wait up against as to why this is a more significant contribution than oh oh it's just that firstly insofar as survival is always going to be speculative the comparative safe haven clearly shifts this debate in favor of government bench when you consider the interest of personal safety which therefore means our contribution it's significant because you throw doubt into the purported stability of this place, the generosity of this community, which means we actually move up bench further in this debate by actually structurally proving what this community is likely to be at, as opposed to maybe it's just going to collapse, which is obviously a far more long term harm, as opposed to us recognizing this community is kind of bad in the short term. But the second thing is that we actually explain a pertinent harm to your physical well being, as opposed to just the psychic harm of guilt, which is to say, if you die because of you're in a sussy community, you cannot achieve your mission to even alleviate the potential guilt you're likely going to feel, and that is why we overcome them. Then at the end, it's that you had to compare the kind of practical harms in this debate, right? Which is that in the worst case scenario of God Bench, which is to say you die or you get turned to a zombie, versus outside where the community maybe kills you or you're locked up forever or you're tortured or enslaved, why is our worst case scenario still preferable? The first reason is just to say, under their world, you die and you go through some sort of pain, but under our world, I don't think actually getting turned into a zombie is that bad in the first place, which is to say, I think being undead is preferable to being a true death, given that zombies probably derive some degree of satisfaction from like 
pure base hedonism of wanting to eat someone's brains or converting other people to zombies, which is why even if you're not super functioning, you're probably still getting utility as a being which kind of exists and can interact. The second thing to note is that even if our harm is death and it's painful, at least we have more certainty and we can make decisions to actually alleviate such pain from occurring, which is why, like most lobodons in these debates, you can just take a diet and, you know, a poison pill and maybe you're going to be okay and it's going to be a far more better sort of life, which therefore means in the worst case scenario, we are still far more better. And in the best case scenario, obviously you save humanity. Obviously, even if you don't, you get a fat sum of cash, which is particularly important in the context of this resource shortages in the context of societal clouds. You're clearly better off under our world. And at the end of this debate, you had to believe you're a man in a story. The story was going to end well for you. You had to continue on your mission. Thank the speaker for that very fine speech that also effectively ends this particular debate. Thank you very much for a fantastic round. Just